What's the deal, dude? I figured since it's so chaotic right now, let's talk about thriving through chaos. And thriving through chaos entails reducing your costs or expenses in your business and your personal life as soon as humanly possible. Uh, I think on the last show, we talked a little bit about inflation being up, liquidity being down. It's just a very, very hard economy to thrive in. And now that we're here, what do you do? And I think it's, you have to go through and do a real cost analysis of where everything's at. Keith, how would you start to do that? This is the number one deal, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, I just don't think you can survive anymore by avoiding it and, and turning your other cheek at it, which a lot of people are doing, right? Mm -hmm. No one's watching the news. People don't give a shit. They don't want to hear it. So they turn the other cheek. Stark reality is that shit is not going to last much longer because the government and finances and debt and consumer interest rates and everything's at an all-time high. Getting through the chaos, it's going to take some patience and it's going to take a lot of people making hard decisions, right? And shit they don't want to deal with. But I think it's self-assessment first. That's what you were alluding to, like sitting back and taking an inventory on where you're at with your family, with your business, with your bills, with your finances, investments, etc., and dissecting that bitch and figuring out the right pathway forward so that you can at least just maintain, yeah. right? Like I'm in maintain mode. Yeah. Would I want my business to 10 X every single year? Absolutely. Do I want everything to grow? Absolutely. But it's truly, mm -hmm. I'm in like, Batting the hatches, I'm in the storm cellar waiting for this fucking thing to get past and just maintain every chance that I can on everything mm -hmm. that I have going on. And yeah. so for us, it's just like, all right, how do we get by another week? We're not setting super long-term goals. How do we get by another week and make sure that we're avoiding catastrophe? And that's worked for us as of late. How long will that work? Who knows? I'm still taking inventory on that shit every week, too. What's the consumer pricing index saying? What's inflation? What are all the things indicating? And then I'll do a quick blip on how many countries are at war today versus last yeah. week. Who's bombing yeah. who? Uh, and yeah. I'll start to make some battleship judgment calls. But man, to be honest with you, there is no fucking right answer here. Yeah. No, self, the self-assessment part, you guys have to get uncomfortable real quick. So I would tell you if you want to do... Uh, expense or spend study, take the last three months of personal and business expenses, obviously do this separate and write down each expense. And then they're going to fall into one of three buckets, necessary, want, but not a need or completely unnecessary. All right. And so think about what's unnecessary. I could already tell you, I go and I get energy drinks and I get these nicotine pouches. Okay. Once or twice a week. If I were to stop that, I'd probably save about 200 or 300 bucks a month. Yes, that too. For <laughs> sure. So somebody would get her. Okay. But the reality is I know that I, if I could save 300 bucks a week, that's 1200 bucks a month. That's fucking insane. When I think about it now, I don't need to be spending that. Okay. Now let's go through this. Like you don't have to eat fast food. You shouldn't eat fast food. You don't need to buy a Starbucks coffee. We all know that those are easy expenses to eliminate, okay? But let's work our way up against things that you're not going to uh, stop spending money on or you shouldn't. Where, what services as an entrepreneur can you shop? You can shop all your insurance, right? That's one. You can shop some, depending on where you are, you can shop internet, but I don't think you're going to save anything there but insurance is the way you accept money so everybody here or the majority of business owners unless they're in a contracting accept credit cards if you accept credit cards that's something that you can shop in fact you could like what we do most of our clients just want to pass the fee to their client and so that eliminates all the payment processing fees except 50 bucks a month and i have seen tons of businesses that pay Fifty, seventy, a hundred thousand dollars in credit card fees on a yearly basis. But what happens if you could get all that money back into your account? Changes the game. What are some other things in the business that you guys can shop that you spend money on? That could be your phone services. It could be your CRM. I'll give you a great example. 
I used to be on Salesforce back in the day. Every one of my employees, it would cost 400 bucks per setup to operate. Well, if you have 10 people, that's $4,000 a month. Okay. If you have 20, it's 8,000. It works just as good. I like it actually better than Salesforce. And I don't even know what I spend on it. I think I spend all in 300 or 400 bucks a month. So I cut my CRM costs 90%. What are some things in your business that you could do that to? What are some ideas that you would shop at? Suicide. We're the same way, man. We shop out everything on a six month basis. And I've been doing that for a few years. Insurance gets shopped out every six months. If I'm renting places, I'm shopping that. I fucking negotiate everything now. Everything. I'll give you an example. Guy today came by. He's like, hey, I'm getting a new loan company at the office. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this guy told me $200 six months ago. Well, he's finally, it's finally coming to fruition. He walked in today. He's like, all right, 300 bucks. And I'm like, uh-uh. I pulled up a text message from a long time ago. I was like, you, you said 200 and they honored it, right? <clears throat> this $1,200 a year that I saved just by not being afraid to bring up what most people probably consider an uncomfortable conversation. Yep. I used to think it was uncomfortable, right? So mm -hmm. I would just pay the shit or whatever. But you would be fucking surprised, right? Yeah. I just had a guy come give me a quote to take a tree down in my backyard. Where I live, they must think I'm loaded because everyone gives me an extra tax, I feel, on yeah, person, what it yes. should cost versus what they're telling me. Well, I did my due diligence, which is another component you should be doing if you're spending money on anything. Do due diligence, mm -hmm. figure out what it's supposed to cost. This guy hit me with a $4,000 quote. I was like, the going rate's $2,800 for this type of tree removed and take to the dump, and the dump fees are 1000 bucks. Like, yeah, let me see what I can do. And sure shit, he came back at $2,800. It's $1,200 that yeah. I saved just by saying one sentence. So <clears throat> I think we just have to be more protective of what we have mm -hmm. and be willing to have conversations with people and negotiate yeah. and get rid of things that you don't want. A lot of people are scared to get rid of shit that they've worked so hard for, or it's a comfort thing, or it's an ego thing, but we're, we're not in a time for that. Right. And <clears throat> unless you're fucking loaded billions, then you probably want to tune in to what's going on and, and put a tourniquet on it. Yeah. That's my feedback. I dig it. <clears throat> I dig it. The other components to a lot of this is just, it's just a fucked up time that no one's used to. I well, haven't gone through this business cycle before. I don't know how to navigate it the correct way. We're doing yeah. what we can based on the facts that we have presented to us. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of us are doing from a business perspective. A lot of people my age went through 08 in the beginning of our professional career, if you will. I did. But have you gone? 08 wasn't like this. 08 was a different stat. You got stabbed. It was quick. It hit and it mm -hmm. recovered. This is a long, drawn out fucking plane crash. In 2008, you had the mortgage meltdown caused by greedy people trading derivatives. And that screwed up the entire mortgage and real estate market, which then bled into other industries. This is different because it's not just one thing, right? You have inflation, very high. You have liquidity, very high. And you have a falling dollar, meaning the value of the dollar has gone to shit. It's lost 25% of its value in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. So we have rampant inflation. We don't have a lot of money out and the money that is there is worth less. Okay. You add a shitty economy to that and it takes a lot of time as Keith is saying to resolve it. If there's not one thing they can do to get us out of this, if they print money, our money is now worth less. Okay. So there's really the only thing out that'll get us out of this is time. And it's entrepreneurs and operators being super smart, super selected and super efficient with what they do. Okay. If you own a business or you're living paycheck to paycheck, this is not the time to take risks. This is the time to get really smart, increase your cash flow, include, increase your liquidity and get rid of any expenses that aren't serving you. 
If you're an individual, work on your skills. If you're a business owner, work on your offer and how you bring clients in and streamline it where it doesn't cost you a lot. If you can lower your cost per to get clients right now, you're going to be winning and you're going to be able to outcompete your competition. If you have to spend more to get the same client your competitor does, you're probably going to lose. These are things that you have to have dialed in these cycles. So if you're in that boat, what can you do to lower the cost of people coming into your business? You can have better ads, better targeting, better marketing, better copy, a better offer. These are all things that if you adjust, you will actually lower your cost to acquire clients. And if you are competing with your competition, for the most part, that's really all that you guys are competing on. You don't realize it, but business A and business B that serves the same client, the business that can get that client in their door and sold for the cheapest cost is going to be the other company. That's math. This is, it maths. It makes sense. Be efficient. Whatever it takes for you to get efficient, that's what you need to focus on these times. Keith, you got anything else for him? I've got a blurry camera. Weird. Oh, there you go. Nice. Yeah. No. <clears throat> no, it is what it is. Those, there's those that are going to do, and the, there's those that are not. And those that are going to do are going to find a way and figure it the fuck out, whether it's YouTube University, whether it's cutting back on all the expenses and, and doing it on their own for a while. Go back to the trenches and when you first went in business. If you wore all the hats. If you have to go okay. fucking back there, go fucking back there. Figure it out. Yeah. And it doesn't, it's just like you canceling cable TV in the moment. It's not a forever thing. But if that's where you've wound up and you want to stay the course of being a business owner, that's the decisions you got to make. You got to lay people off. You got to tighten the budget. You got to figure it out. Maybe you have to fire that expensive ass ads company. Maybe you have to go negotiate a price now, right? Everyone is feeling this. There's not anyone out there that's not feeling it. He's not going to feel it like you and I feel it, but it sucks, right? And so yeah. the end all be all of this is there's not one fucking cure. There's not one thing you can go do to fix it, but you're going to have to get creative and you're going to have to go to a, a dark place and make some hard decisions to get on the other side of all this shit. Yeah. Or go back and get a W-2 job somewhere. Right? And I don't say that as a degrading comment, but don't let yourself fight and fight and fight and fight until you're in bankruptcy. Right. Either figure some shit out, ask some friends, collaborate with some people. You're hurting and so is your competition. Yeah. And that's industry wide and that's nationwide, all industries. Like I have talked to a lot of different industries in the past six months and everyone's feeling the same pressure. So this mm -hmm. isn't us talking to one silo of individual. It's dude, it's everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Except for the White House and, and the, the Pentagon. All those people yeah. seem to be doing just fine. They're doing great. Um, <laughs> guys, this is, it's really simple, okay? But I think one of the best things I've heard Keith say is you guys are going to have to go to a really dark place, okay? And that's not just for guys that are just starting out. I want you guys to understand. And that's for the guys that have built seven and eight-figure businesses. And something I have noticed is I've worked with seven, eight, nine-figure businesses my whole life. I don't really do rescue capital. Meaning a company comes in and they need me to fix that. My ideal client is someone looking to grow, someone looking to scale. I have seen more people apply in the last 12 to 18 months that have seven, eight, and nine figure businesses that are looking for rescue capital. If that doesn't tell you that things are not right or things are not going right now, I don't know what will. Okay. Because right now I'm seeing that more than I'm seeing anything else. So what that means is as an operator, you have to be super smart and you have to put these things in place that me and Keith are talking about to prevent you from having an uncomfortable conversation with me in three to six months about rescue capital. All right. Uh, Keith, you got anything else, big dog? That's it, man. Just All make right. Some, make some tough decisions and save your ass. That's the key to the metric right now. Um, Absolutely. Unless you're in the matrix. You know. Well, Puff Daddy, they just had to collect and get rid of evidence. So that was easy.
It's all in a trash bin somewhere by three letter That's agency. It. Well, right. boys and girls. Exactly. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in, guys.